Chapter 1. We tend to misunderstand collaboration. We often get the definition of collaboration wrong. We usually imagine people being on the same page, in harmony, and fully controlling the situation. However, this conventional view of collaboration is becoming more outdated in complex contemporary societies. Adam Kahane proposes to approach this term differently by putting forward stretch collaboration. Our understanding of collaboration as a controlled production of agreement contravenes the challenges of today. This type of co-working presupposes that we take discord, mistakes, and even chaos as normal conditions that boost our progress rather than signalize failure. We need to shift our focus from agreeing with each other to embracing the benefits of the conflict. Go for multiple possibilities instead of one plan and try not to change others, rather venture to change ourselves. It might seem that Kahane nudges us to get out of our comfort zone, and that is right to some extent. But a better way to put it is get out of your comfort zone and take agency. Stretch collaboration redefines our view of working with each other in that it helps us reap the benefits from conflicts and detach from the idea of having a steadfast plan. In this summary, we will go over the main aspects that differentiate conventional from stretch collaboration, offering ways of painless adoption of this new strategy. It is always hard to change learned behaviors, but Adam Kahane makes it feel like we all can do it seamlessly. Chapter 2 Every time we focus on the enemy, we barely manage to get what really matters done. We feel threatened when someone criticizes our work. We want to defend ourselves by either fighting back or escaping. The person who articulates our imperfection is commonly viewed as an enemy. Your enemy is not necessarily a bad guy that holds a knife to your throat. It could be anyone who thinks and acts differently. Difference is essentially the core of enemyfying, as Adam Kahane calls it. We usually find just one way to deal with our enemies, destroy them. An example of this is the 2016 presidential election that urged the nation to unite against a common enemy. This logic manifests in the inverted moral superiority that, since your enemy is a bad person, you must be a good and righteous one. The demonization of the other gives a delusive sense of stability. Enemyfying, vilifying, and demonizing pervade political discourse around the world. And we enact this enemyfying syndrome not only in politics, but also at work and at home. Adam Kahane. Things are made even harder when two contradictory definitions of the word collaboration come into place. One of them assumes that you should work harmoniously with the others, while the other suggests that you team up with your enemy. These oppositions create tension, making us even more apprehensive because we understand that we will have to work with these different others for mutual benefit. Quite gratifying is that stretch collaboration is made possible beyond conventional power relations that rest upon hierarchies. Instead, co-creation and experimentation come into play. Did you know, Hugo Chavez was the president of Venezuela in 1999 to 2013. Chapter 3. Collaboration is not always the best choice to deal with difficulties. In the 1990s, Adam Kahane quit his job at Royal Dutch Shell headquarters in London and moved to Cape Town. There, he facilitated the collaboration between the leaders of different political and social groups following the end of apartheid. Conventional collaboration appeared to be a beneficial strategy. However, this approach didn't prove as fruitful for other groups of stakeholders. Example, Venezuela under Hugo Chavez and Thailand on the verge of a civil war. Collaboration of any kind is not a flawless, universal solution to all problems. Having examined these cases closer, Kahane concluded four options for solving problems. Adapting, forcing, exiting, collaborating. The first three options need clarification. When you choose to adapt, you are still a part of the group working on a solution, but decide to go along with anything other parties do. Forcing means powering through with your ideas and doing whatever it takes for others to accept them. As you exit, you leave the group and respectively stop looking for the solution. We adapt or exit when others are more powerful than us and so can force things to be the way they want them to be. We force when we are the more powerful, and we collaborate only when our power is evenly matched and neither of us can impose our will. Adam Kahane In collaboration, we cannot change the situation without the others. As we make compromises, we might find ourselves sacrificing too many of our beliefs. If this leaves us feeling unsettled, anxious, and brings us farther than ever from the desired goal, we might resort to other options. These options work not only in the business world. 
If you are exhausted from having arguments with your spouse, adapt, play along. If you feel betrayed and threatened by your government, exit, leave the country. If your students think that sexual harassment at a workplace is women begging for attention, force your argument as eloquently and persuasively as possible. Adam Kahane explicitly stresses the necessity of being flexible and open to trying different strategies for solving problems, as one of them might work for you. Chapter 4. Controlled Collaboration is a Thing of the Past It is not always a problem we need to fix. In a larger context, we deal with change. When pursuing this change, it is best to avoid these three mistakes. Number one, considering only benefits and ignoring drawbacks. Number two, choosing one option and overlooking other possibilities. Number three, pushing your view and expecting others to agree with it. Not everyone involved in the process of decision-making will be happy and satisfied all along. That's a utopia. We need to be able to hear out as well as voice different, sometimes unpleasant, points of view. Flexibility and being actively present in the process of collaboration are crucial for its successful result. It is best to avoid authoritarian communication models, as they breed defensiveness, not consent. Adam Kahane believed that the best solution consists of the following steps. Come close to the ideal solution. Find people with authority to enforce it. Have their subordinates implement it. But he was not entirely correct. Our societies are pluralistic. People are aware of their differences more than ever. Their identities are best described as fluid. That is where unpredictability stems from. However, in collaboration, it is not a drawback or a risk factor, but a stimulus that gives all the players equal chances to manifest themselves. Thinking that there is just one right answer that suits everyone is a false premise. Us versus them opposition comes into place once again. We are good, they are evil. Our values contradict and sometimes are mutually exclusive. Nevertheless, we should not strive to drown our opponents, but instead talk to each other, make compromises, and never forget that it is not us that are threatened by them. It is our ideas that get a chance to evolve. Chapter 5. With Stretch Collaboration, Get Ready to Become an Explorer of the Unknown By doing things together, we learn that the other is not an enemy we must destroy. Does it mean that we have to love our enemy? Adam Kahane believes that we need to be able to stretch. Our ideas, beliefs, attitudes, as well as our patience and personality as a whole. We need to learn to step aside from our usual practices and master new behaviors. Refusing to follow the beaten path may open new perspectives. Kahane further defined stretch collaboration through the following approaches. The situation is challenging and dubious. All agree on that. However, it is not essential to have a precise definition of what the problem is. Collaboration unfolds in the process. No need to have one engrossing vision. We should not attempt to change the other person. We need to strive to change ourselves to the extent necessary to produce a great result and feel good about ourselves. The bar for making progress on complex challenges is therefore not as high as most people think. We do not need to agree on what the solution is or even on what the problem is. Adam Kahane. Relations in a group of people working toward a common goal may be different, harmonious or mutually hateful. That is normal. We also need to make peace with the outcome's unpredictability and be open to changing ourselves, not others, particularly stretch. Did you know, Nelson Mandela was an anti-apartheid activist who became the president of South Africa in 1994. Chapter 6 Collaboration is a pendulum swinging between asserting and engaging. The death of Nelson Mandela in 2013 prompted Kahane to revise his legacy. Mandela's political activism was not always a peaceful rendering urge to dialogue. At times, he resorted to more violent tools of influence. Fighting and engaging are two pillars of the same process, and one can be used to create a conducive environment for the other. Therefore, both strategies are equally important as they complete each other. Forcing everyone else to accept your ideas, views, and principles, and not being ready to step back as a starting point, is counterproductive. Arthur Kostler came up with the term holon, to give a name to the entity that is a part and a whole at the same time. For example, a person is whole but can be a part of a larger organism, society. Being different by nature, holons have distinct and even incompatible views of what is right and wrong. That is the essence of the conflict that needs to be brought to light. 
part and the whole dichotomy applies the need for self-realization on two levels. As a singular independent entity and as a component of a larger whole that comprises such entities. The value of pluralism might be a starting point for modern societies to embrace differences while focusing on similarities. Whichever we choose, to hear our opponent out or force our view onto them, we should be guided by prioritizing the good of our tandem, not our individual benefits. Power and love featured in one of Kahane's earlier books are two drives that shape our subjectivities and relations with each other. Power lets us strive for self-realization, whereas love makes us long for uniting with others. These two drives are interchangeable but have different embedded values, so we cannot exercise them simultaneously. Alternating them allows us to keep our identities safe and make room for building healthy relationships. The key to alternating between engaging and asserting is to know when to employ which, so as to keep the cycle generative rather than degenerative. Adam Kahane Engaging and asserting are two strategies that Kahane compares to love and power, respectively. Sometimes we need to listen to each other with empathy and openness and be ready to make compromises. However, we might also feel the need to stick to our guns if what we believe in is right and likely to benefit larger communities. When we only engage, the process of problem-solving stagnates, asserting as the only strategy is counterproductive as well. Chapter 7 In diverse societies like ours, controlled collaboration gives way to experiment. The result of a stretch collaboration is not always a perfect solution to an existing problem. This approach has other benefits. It helps us treat each other differently, with more openness and patience. We also learn to imagine possible outcomes by developing various narratives or scenarios of the future. Before something comes into existence, we need to imagine it. Developing possible outcomes of a situation helps all the parties to see different perspectives and make them more likely to change their rigid minds. For stretch collaboration to be successful, we need to create favorable conditions and abandon our usual mindset. Instead of relying on one solid plan or a roadmap, we should understand its emergent nature, fluidity, and see it as a process and experiment. Implied here are the following strategies we apply in sequence, intended, deliberate, realized. First, we try to develop a plan and implement it. Later, our different ideas, expectations, and suggestions come into play forcing us to experiment with them rather than fit them into our original plan. Finally, as we come to terms with the others and agree on several possible scenarios, the strategy is realized. Open listening is the key practice required to experiment a way forward. Adam Kahane The question is, how do you work with others? Adam Kahane suggests that essential skills required here are not novel inventions. They are listening and speaking that together make up a participant's behavior. Our aim falls into two categories. Part or whole explains whether we want to benefit ourselves or a larger whole we are part of. Habitual or new defines whether we prefer sticking to existing narratives over creating new ones. Based on different combinations of these, Otto Scharmer, a senior lecturer at the Sloan School of Management, singles out four types of behaviors. Downloading, debating, dialoguing, presencing. When you download, you know the ultimate truth and the others must know it too. This is an I am right and you are wrong position. Debating occurs when an external referee observes what is happening and later enters into a discussion with his views on the subject. This way, members of a group can come forward with their different opinions and voice them. In dialoguing, everyone is equal and talks from within the group. Members tend to show sympathy and look for common experiences. Presencing is a coined word that contains the ideas of being present and sensing ahead. In this kind of participation, people feel their barriers vanish and start thinking as an emergent whole. Presencing is a shared sense of the potential of a whole that includes and transcends our individual wholes. Adam Kahane Chapter 8 We Need to Assume Responsibility and Take Action One way or another, we need to realize that we are not the pivot of any group. A process will flow smoothly as soon as we stop centering it around us. Begin with interacting on equal terms with your counterparts and remember to commit to the situation, not as an outside observer, but as a dedicated team player. Expecting others to change while you are staying the same is the dead end of a collaboration process. Neither remaining outside the process nor centering it around ourselves can we feel about the right way to go. We need to be active for the process to be rewarding. 
Nevertheless, many people fear being active because proposing something means assuming responsibility. We realize that we can't just talk. What we need now is to back up our words with actions. Taking on responsibility, for sure, implies taking risks. It is vital to remember that the risk of being wrong doesn't lead to losing our identity or face. Making mistakes and working on them helps us, and others, see ourselves as strong, mature, and reliable people. Risk is a noble thing. The one who takes it grows. We become unbalanced by overlooking ourselves, by focusing on what others, rather than ourselves, need to be doing. Adam Kahane. Even when the outcome is not a spectacular one, being committed leaves us much more satisfied than when we blame everyone around us for doing a lousy job, but never actually doing anything ourselves. Dive in. Do your best. Live in that rewarding moment. Strive for more. Conclusion Adam Kahane proposes to look at collaboration in an unconventional way. Instead of preparing for unanimity and harmony that will produce a perfect solution to any problem, we should be ready to embrace our differences and the conflicts they entail. We should be able to learn from people we deem to be our enemies obsolete our plans and roadmaps as well as clear definitions of what the problem is. We have to agree that there is a problem no matter how differently we see what it is. In stretch collaboration, we don't come from point A to point B directly. Our path may be crooked, bumpy, and challenging, but the process of walking this path is the gist. Every new step brings us the unknown that we need to examine and test. Finally, if we choose to collaborate by stretching, we ought to be ready to dedicate our time, intellect, and energy to that in which we are engaged. This way, we will feel more efficient, worthy, and capable. By taking responsibility and risks, we become more robust and gain more experience. Your enemies can be your greatest teachers. Adam Kahane The value of stretch collaboration lies in itself. It does not fixate on the result as a solid fact. The focus shifts towards how we learn new truths about ourselves and the ways to treat other people. Moreover, we can experience our vulnerability and complexes as powerful resources there to promote our personal growth. Developing several future scenarios, we also call into existence different persons we might be in these scenarios. Furthermore, it implicitly raises the question of trust as the way to relate to other people and ourselves. Try this. Ready to leave behind the idea of being humble and shy or pushy and ignorant when interacting with other people? Start keeping a journal of observations. Plan five weeks ahead. Here is a set of tasks to do during each week. Week one, trace how much you engage and assert. See if any of these drives is dominant. Ask your colleague to do the same. At the end of the week, compare your findings. Week two, which drive is developed to a weaker extent? Choose three actions where it manifests and practice them during the week. Keep your colleague in the picture. Ask for feedback. Week 3. Concentrate on your talking and listening strategies. Define your dominant one. Do the week 1 tasks. Week 4. Stretch from downloading and debating towards dialoguing and presencing. Week 5. Assume responsibility and start acting. Make a list of all actions that you are taking. See how you can strengthen the ones that are about co-creating. You can do these exercises with any partner whose judgment you trust, your spouse, a friend, or a coworker.